Here's another collision example. Let's read the question. An elastic collision occurs between two bodies X and Y. Okay, very nice. They draw up the scenario. Even they draw for you before and after. What a treat. Okay, so the mass of body X is M and the mass of body Y is 4M. Okay, so my boy here is the light one. Mass M. And my boy Y is the chunky one. 4M. Sure. Both body, uh, body X and travels at speed V before the collision. Okay, so you have this uh, speed V of body X before collision. And the speed of 3V over 5 after the collision. Hmm. Hmm. Body Y is stationary, and obviously it will not be stationary after this. Okay, what is the kinetic energy of body Y after the collision? So again, they are trying to relate... Uh, momentum and kinetic energy. So there are a few ways to approach the question. Of course, the immediate thinking would be, hey, kinetic energy of body Y. So I need a few information. I need to find the mass of body Y and the velocity of body Y squared. But I could find VY, right? And I have this 4M. So I guess if I can find VY in terms of V, I can substitute 4M inside and then I can just see lah, which fraction is correct. All right, so based on past experience, it seems that it will work. So I'll start off first by trying to find Vy. And it should be obvious to you that we will use the conservation of momentum. So step number one, I'm going to use the conservation of momentum. Sum of initial is equal to the sum of final momentum. Who initial? Lah? Who, who here? Who is the initial one? MV is the one that is moving. Okay. So only MV is moving. Is Y moving? No. So plus zero. Because Y is not moving. All right. Then this will be equal to, if you check out the mass M, because it collides with something that is four times the mass, or it kind of like gets reflected, you know, it changes direction. So now it changes direction, and I'll put a negative here to indicate that change in direction. Okay, so this one here is negative because, again, I'm taking this to the right is positive and to the left is negative. Ah, sign is very important, okay. All right, so we still need to add on to Vy. So my, I mean, my particle Y. So Y is uh, traveling, looks like it's traveling to the right. So I'll put here 4M multiplied by Vy. We are looking for Vy. So right now, the first thing I notice is, oh, the M can bye-bye. Okay. All right. So what I have left now on one side would be V plus 3V over 5. Okay. And then here you will have 4V1. Okay. I'm almost there. So if you can add them together, that'll be great. But if you are struggling with algebra, it's always okay to factorize or take out the Take out the V first, and then you will see we are actually adding 1 to 3 over 5. This is 4Vy. So 1 plus uh, 3 over 5 will be 8 over 5. So 8 over 5V is 4Vy. So I can bring this one over here. I will get Vy is equal to 2 over 5V. So this Vy is 2 over 5V. So you want to find kinetic energy now? Can. So hence, the kinetic energy will be equal to half kinetic energy for Y. So I take the mass of Y, which is 4M, multiplied by the velocity of Y, which is 2 over 5V squared. So I can put all of these fractions together. It will be 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Yeah, 4. So it will be 4 over 5. 4 over 5. Hang on. This is 2m. This is 4 over 25b squared. Okay. All right. So now this will give me 8 over 25b squared. mb squared, sorry. Use your calculator to help me if you need, okay? So this is ke for 1. Sure, no 8 over 25 there. 
my dude, 8 over 25 is the same as 16 over 50. Why they put like that? I don't know. Or rather, uh, it doesn't matter because you can always just use your calculator to help you with your fractions. All right? So in CIE, MCQ can give you fraction, but paper two, you must write this in decimal point. So if you write either 8 over 25 or 16 over 15 decimal point, obviously it'll be the same answer. But that will be the answer, which now consists of two steps. Step one, I use sum of uh, potential, uh, sum of momentum before and after is the same. Okay, so I sum the momentum before, I equate it to the momentum after, and I found the expression of Vy in terms of V, so that I can substitute into the equation of kinetic energy. So this is step two. All right, this is my step two. Okay, so the second thing is, you may be wondering why they purposely change this to 16 over 50 instead of 8 over 25. To be honest, guys, I don't know. Maybe they didn't expect me to simplify you know? like this two folks. So don't worry about it. Okay. It's just a fraction thing. Okay. And finally, um, you may be thinking, is there another way to solve this? Because this way is okay. But can I use uh, things like, um, you know, like they say, elastic collision? Are there other ways to solve this? Since the collision is elastic, we can use kinetic energy as an option. So I'll write here, or a second method. Let me zoom in for you. Okay, so elastic collision here, Ke conserved. Hmm. So if Ke is conserved, I will say that the sum of the initial Ke will be equal to the sum of the final Ke. Okay, okay. Initial Ke, who is moving? Ah? Nah, our little green boy here. Lo. So half mv squared. Okay, m here, v here. It's a, uh, is uh, 4m moving? Is particle y moving? No, so zero. Okay, final kinetic energy, that would be half m 3v over 5 square. Teacher, no need negative. Ah. Ah, nah, you negative, don't negative, doesn't matter. It's a scalar quantity. So you square already also become positive. Okay, so I'm not going to put a negative inside. All right, and then finally, we're going to plus the Ke of uh, object y. Okay, I guess I can just bring this over and minus, right? Yeah. So I guess I'll do that. Um, shifting this over, this is half mv squared minus half mv squared, okay, bracket, 3 over 5 squared. That would be 9 over 25. Okay, I took out the v squared, okay? Then this will be the kinetic energy for y. All right, let's factorize the half mv squared. We don't know what to do with this. It's the same idea. So here will be 1 minus 9 over 25. So I guess I'll simplify this. Uh, I'll take 1 minus 9 over 25, and then I'll divide by 2. So uh, I will end up with 16, 16 over 25. I'm writing down all the steps now. You don't have to. And finally, you bring this one over inside and you multiply. So you will get the kinetic energy of y is equal to 16 over 2 times 25 with e b squared. Of course, you could simplify and you can get this one, but they are the same thing. Okay. So this is a single step process. Kinetic energy is conserved. So remember, when it comes to collision, momentum is always conserved. Okay, let me zoom up a bit. Momentum is always conserved for all collision. But for perfectly elastic collision, besides momentum being conserved, Ke is also conserved. So if you don't want to go through a two-step process like this to find the speed of uh, y and then substituting into Ke, you can always take the initial Ke is equal to final Ke and then move things around to simplify, depending on your confidence when dealing with algebra. All right. And finally, uh, it's good to know two different methods. You know why? Because sometimes you have enough information to only do this. 
sometimes you have enough information to only do this. All right, that's it. Try out some questions on your own. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.